If you've ever experienced virtual or augmented reality, then you've used a computer-generated hologram. A hologram, when looking at it directly, looks like a nonsensical pattern of lines and swirls. This pattern, however, is anything but random. It's specifically designed to take incoming coherent light and reconstruct it into a three-dimensional image. It does this using a concept called diffraction. Diffraction describes how light changes as it passes through a narrow aperture or around the edges of an object. We can use this idea to manipulate light in a desired direction. If we send light through a pattern of concentric circles which become thinner further from the center of the circle, we are able to focus the light at a specific location without the use of a traditional lens with some thickness and curvature. This is called a Fresnel lens. The Fresnel lens is the heart of the Fresnel hologram. You can think of the Fresnel hologram as a construction of tons of tiny Fresnel lenses organized in a specific pattern in order to direct each ray of light to a specific point in space, which, altogether, forms a 3D image. A computer-generated hologram, or CGH, is created by mapping out the desired final image and using diffractive optics to essentially reverse engineer what pattern is necessary to form the image. CGHs for professional applications are typically created by etching or printing a pattern of lines on the order of the wavelength of light into a substrate such as fused silica. However, it's possible to create a CGH using nothing but a sheet of transparency paper and a laser printer. These holograms can create an image simply by holding a laser pointer close to the CGH and directing the light to a surface approximately 2 meters away. This system, however, can be improved. Because these are Fresnel holograms, the image is created at a precise location in space, which is specified during the design process. In order to see a better reconstruction of the hologram, we will use a laser diode, an iris, a lens, a viewing screen, and an optical rail. First, we collimate the light from the laser diode. Geometric optics tells us that we can do this by placing the source at the focal point of the lens. You can tell the light is collimated when the image of the light is the same size at every distance. Next, we stop down our system by placing the iris close to the lens between the lens and the source. This limits the stray light that makes it into our system. Finally, we place the hologram behind the lens. Now you can slide the viewing screen along the rail until the image is formed. Some holograms have very long image distances, so it may be helpful to move the lens away from the source ever so slightly in order to converge the beam at a shorter distance. A link will be provided in the description of this video to a program which can be used to generate your own holograms for printing. A setup like the one shown in this video, but on a much smaller scale, is embedded into virtual and augmented reality headsets and is used to form the images you see before your eyes. The applications of holography are growing every day, with new uses constantly being discovered in medicine, communication, military, education, art, metrology, and much more. If holography or optics in general interests you, visit the University of Arizona Wyant College of Optical Sciences website to learn about our Optical Sciences degree program. And don't forget to follow the link in the description to make your very own hologram.